Europac.com. Peter Schiff, Euro Pacific Capital, billions under management, predicted uh, the 2008 crises and so much more. He's been predicting that QE Unlimited would work. And he's been predicting much of what's now happened. And I've got a bunch of economic news. After he starts breaking it down, I'm going to go over here today. Uh, but uh, here are some of the headlines. Simply the worst. Obama is the first president ever to not see a single year of 3% GDP growth. Very, very interesting to see that happening. Uh, we've got other reports here. White House struggles to explain weak economy as Obama boasts of job growth. U.S. economy expands to 0 0.5, pace weakest in two years. Let me just first ask Peter Schiff this. Peter, we know that a lot of experts use old government accounting numbers that still weren't perfect, but like John Williams and others, and they crunch things. I know you do this yourself. Obviously, these are cooked numbers. So looking at this, What's the real state of the economy after seven and a half years of Obama? And then obviously they're admitting now the world economy is in deep crisis. Where are we going after that? Well, the economy is a complete disaster. It's actually a lot worse than what people think because the only way they're able to manufacture the growth rates that we have is by pretending there's no inflation. For example, the first quarter where they just told us uh, that we got half a percent, 0.5 GDP growth, and by the way, the Atlanta Fed just forecasted, or not the Atlanta, the New York Fed is now forecasting 0.8% for the second quarter. So not even a bounce back. But the government told us that inflation in the first quarter was just 0.7% on an annualized basis. Now, it, for the fourth quarter of last year, they told us that inflation was 0.9. So theoretically, they're saying inflation went down. Oil prices were up 3.5% uh, in the first quarter. Rents were way up. In fact, year over year, rents are up 8%. All the prices are going up, and the government is claiming that inflation is practically non-existent. Yet, even with non-existent inflation, the best they can do is a half a percent GDP growth. We are in a recession. Whether the government wants to acknowledge it or not, this is a recession. Nothing that Obama did work. He inherited a mess, I agree, but he is going to leave his successor with an even bigger mess. The economy is in worse shape. The Fed made it worse, and I think, yeah, they're going to be doing QE4. They're going to be cutting rates. They might be going negative. The only question is, will they do it before the election or after? Because if they go before the election, then they have to acknowledge how weak the economy is, and that undermines the message that Hillary is going to be run, running on, and it hurts the credibility of Obama, who's going around the world taking credit for saving everybody. Here's my concern, correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't they just accelerated the same policies that Bush had, who just continued the Clinton policies that set up this current scam we're under? A, and then B, uh, Peter, my concern is they say massive tax increases on middle class for the next banker bailout. They've only expanded derivatives. So my concern yeah, I mean, is about have, what they're going to do to respond to this. Yeah, uh, all Obama did was double down or triple down on the same failed policies that brought us the 08 crisis, which is why this one is better. It's going to be bigger, but nobody is prepared for it. Look, gold is at a new high for the year today. It almost hit 1300. Silver made a new high for the year. Gold stocks are at a new high. You know, the average gold stock has doubled in price in the last three months. Some have tripled, some have quite Sure, what about the lawsuit that Zero Hedge is reporting on now where they're basically admitting that gold has been manipulated? Well, who cares if it's been manipulated? It's going to go up. They can't stop it. No, but it. that's my point, but is it proves it's going to go up if they've been naked shorting it all along. Oh, yeah. Well, look, but, they, but a lot of the shorting has been because they don't understand what's going to happen. The typical hedge fund is blowing up right now. All the big money on Wall Street has been betting wrong for years. Those bad bets are blowing up. Right now, it's like a deer in a headline moment for them. The dollar index just hit a new low for the year. We are heading for a dollar crisis Gold prices are going to explode. I've been telling your audience this for months and months. I've been coming on the show. People need to do something. No, People no, I've to told to you I'm not sure, but it just seems like common sense that if there's massive inflation in currencies everywhere, and then gold's always been pegged as a backup currency, it's going to go up. They artificially drove it down, but like a beach ball, you can't hold it at the bottom of the pool yeah. forever. The, the Chinese yuan just had its biggest up day yesterday since 2005 against the dollar, and the hedge funds are short the yuan. They are all positioned uh, for the exact wrong outcome. There's still a window of opportunity. I mean, it's getting sh you know smaller and smaller. Sure. Because the where do you think gold will be day. by? De where do you think gold will be on December fifteenth? Excuse me. You know, by the, it, it tends to every year have its peak in in the in, in the fall and winter. I mean, how high do you think it'll get this year? 
Look, I think gold's going a lot higher. I mean, once we get through 1300, we're knocking on the door. I think we can move up to 1500, you know, again, relatively soon. And if the Fed acknowledges the weakness in the economy that they're still denying, when the Fed came out with their sure. statement a couple of days ago, they didn't raise rates, but they're still pretending that the economy is strong enough that a rate hike is coming. Sure, well, you and, Dent, you and Dent had your, your, your friendly debate here, but it got a little bit heated. And I think he's a smart guy, made a lot of you know, predictions like you have, and I get his demographic cliff, but I, I agree with you. The fact that there's limited amounts of gold and that everybody values it around the world, and the Chinese and institutions are getting it, that's why it is going to go up. Scarcity means more value, yeah, and Dent, I don't see this Dent, as a dead cat bounce now, how long it's been going up. Yeah, Dent is dead wrong on this. I mean, he's, he's basically siding with Goldman Sachs and you, the mainstream on Wall Street. He believes in the dollar. He believes in the Fed. He thinks gold's going down. Put all your money in U.S. dollars. Buy U.S. treasuries. He couldn't be more wrong. Hopefully, he will... Uh, you know, acknowledge his mistake. I remember when he was on the phone on the show with me, I forget what price point he said that he would turn around and get bullish on gold if it got above 1400 or 1450. I forget where that was. Yeah, he said that. But yeah. we're going to be there soon. So maybe he'll turn around and get on the right side of this trade because I'm afraid too many people are going to follow his advice and lose a lot of money. You got to understand what's really going on. And once you understand this, you know how it's going to play out. You got to get your money. Okay, out okay. Of the talk box. to me like I'm five years old because I am kind of when it comes to this sometimes. I mean, I get it, but I want to hear it lay it out. In four minutes, Peter Schiff, tell me why gold and silver are going up. Well, gold and silver, first of all, the reason that gold went down and silver went down the last few years is because everybody believed that the Fed solved their problems. Everybody believed we had a healthy economy, the Fed could raise interest rates, shrink its balance sheet. And that was wrong. The Fed didn't do anything. They just blew a bigger bubble. All of our problems were made worse. And I was saying for years, the Fed couldn't raise interest rates. They were bluffing. If they tried, they would prick the bubble and the market would tank. And that's exactly what happened when they raised rates in December. That exactly the happened. Been backtracking. But as people figure this out, gold's going to go ballistic because everybody's going to dump the dollar because they only bought dollars because they thought the Fed was finished printing. They thought the Fed was going to raise rates. When they realized they can never raise rates, that they got us so hooked on this monetary heroin that we can never quit the habit, then the dollar has no place to fall. Meanwhile, the Chinese are selling, the Russians are selling, the Saudis are selling. This is going to be one of the biggest a currency collapses we've ever seen and the only place well, that is really true that china our biggest holder after the private federal reserve is now accelerating the dumping and others are but uh, so what does that signify i mean if this is the race of the exits what's the time frame peter you just got to hurry up i mean I, it's a question of when do all the people wake up it's like wiley e. coyote runs off the cliff you know when does he look down and realize he's not standing on anything when the people who hold dollars look down and realize what they own it's going to drop like a stone. And there's, again, you know, it's getting more and more expensive now to get out of sure. the dollar because the dollar keeps going down, but it hasn't collapsed yet. Let me I mean, ask you about the Yellen dollars. Obama secret treasury meeting. They won't tell us what was about two weeks ago. What was that? Well, I'm sure they're panicking. I mean, look, here's this prediction. Here's the prediction. I mean, the, 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 um, the problem for the Fed. They don't want to admit how weak the economy is because Obama is talking about how great it is. And, and Hillary Clinton is running on four more years. So how can the Fed do more stimulus without acknowledging that the economy needs the stimulus? Yes. So this is the problem. And, you know, there is no solution for this. But for the investors, for individuals, you've got to take action. That's my, what the point I'm trying to make is, you know, I'm working with clients now at Europe Pacific Capital, Shift Gold. People don't have a lot of time to get rid of the dollars because when all the hedge funds that have been loading up on dollars when they, all, when they figure this out and they go to dump their dollars, there's going to be no buyers. So before that happens, people have to get out of their currency, buy your gold, buy your Swiss francs, buy your New Zealand dollars, buy your Singapore dollars, use your U.S. dollars to buy stocks overseas. So you really think a massive dollar correction is coming or, or, or the death of the dollar? I mean, what? Well, look. I don't look. Eventually, we're going to have to back the dollar by gold, or it's going to it's just going to be uh, monopoly money. But in the in the interim, the dollar has a long way to drop before it goes into a crisis. But it's a long way down, and there's no reason to lose all that purchasing power. I mean, the the, the big people on Wall Street who are so leveraged in favor of the dollar, you know, the, the losses. That's because all their bets are stuff. in. They don't have a choice. They're they're going to be. They're still refusing to admit they were wrong despite all the money they're losing. Everybody is blowing up. Everybody sure, let me is ask you this. Blowing. Could the Federal Reserve monetize all of it as it already is monetizing like half of it? Could they just keep that well, fantasy land going forever? 
they're going to try because as everybody tries to dump the U.S. dollar, they're also dumping U.S. treasuries. That would send long-term interest rates up, which would crash the housing market and force the federal government to default. The, Fed, the, tre the Federal Reserve doesn't want that. <clears throat> so as people want to get out of the dollar, now the Fed has to crank up the printing presses all even right. more. Peter Schiff, stay there. Stay treasuries. there, my friend. It's just, it makes it worse. Stay right there. And, and of course, I didn't intro the piece like this, but so far in this battle between he and you know our other friend, he's being proven right because the dollar is starting to drop. People are running out of the dollar. Gold is going up. And I just, no matter what scenario we go into, we're in deep trouble. But I mean, man, we are sitting on top of a time bomb. Get ready, folks. Get prepared. That's all I can tell you. Final segment with our guest straight ahead. We got Peter Schiff with us five minutes the next hour. And then we have David Knight taking over with all the latest breaking news, all the latest at Infowars.com. There's more and more censorship happening on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. It's more important than ever that everybody go to Infowars.com forward slash newsletter and put in your email if you want to be able to get special alerts, videos, uh, also promo codes. Every week we send out a code on a particular item at Infowarsstore.com up to 30% off. Uh, specials for folks. I've never been big on email just because I never you know, really used it. I used it for a newsletter. That was it. But uh, from all the experts, I'm told more and more as the censorship intensifies, going low-tech internet is the way to go. So be sure you go to infowars.com forward slash newsletter so we can stay in contact there no matter what happens. Uh, Peter Schiff is our guest. Peter, getting into this, how does Obamacare affect things like a wet blanket? They're saying get ready for premiums to go up again in the Associated Press. How does all these different cities saying, hey, guess what? We've taken your pension funds from the teacher's fund. I mean, you really see signs of things unraveling and the mainstream media trying to tell people everything's okay, but no one's buying it. I mean, could you argue that the, the depression's here? It's just not evenly distributed? Well, we've been in a depression ever since Obama stepped into office. But look at the GDP. The GDP, we've now had three consecutive quarters of declining GDP. Uh, the last quarter, uh, first quarter of this year, it was 0.5. I believe it's lower than that. But whatever the first quarter was, I believe the quarter that we're in now, the second quarter, is going to be lower than the first quarter. So this is a recession. And Obamacare is making it a lot worse because it's, it's layering our businesses that were already uncompetitive with even higher costs. But, you know, it's ironic that because so many businesses have had to get rid of all their full-time workers because they can't afford to employ them full-time, thanks to Obamacare, that's how come the president can claim credit for all the job creation, because we had to create a lot more part-time jobs than the full-time jobs that we destroyed because of Obamacare. So there's more jobs and the president can take credit for all these jobs, but the workers who have these jobs actually earn less money because these part-time jobs don't pay as well as the jobs that they lost. So he just basically threw a drowning economy in anchor when he passed Obamacare, because we were in trouble, and this made it worse. What do you make of nearly half of millennials in a national survey last week not liking capitalism and wanting socialism? I mean, they just seem to have no sense. Well, you know, no wonder they don't like capitalism because, you know, we don't have capitalism. We call what we have capitalism, but it's not. What we have is a disgrace. It's, it's corporatism, it's cronyism, it's fascism, whatever you want to call it. But don't call it capitalism because that's not what we have. But, of course, if we actually went full socialism, I mean, it would be even worse. I mean, the problem with our economy is all the socialist policies that have crept into it over the years. Of that's course. what's corrupted it. It's what, whatever remains of capitalism sure. is all we've got going. How right? far so is the Dow going to go down before this is over? Well, I don't know. It all depends on the Fed. It all depends on when the Fed comes clean, how much stimulus they do, when they apply it. Uh, but, you know, the, the earnings aren't there. The corporate earnings keep falling. U.S. stocks are expensive and we're in recession. There's no real reason for the stock market to go up. But there's a big reason for the dollar to go down. And if the dollar is collapsing, people are looking for safe havens. And some people look at the stock market. But there's better safe havens. So there's is the gold, stock market silver, the final bubble? Is the stock stock sure. Is the stock market the final bubble? No, I think I don't think the stock market is the real bubble. I think the big bubble is the dollar, the bond market, which is really an IOU dollars in the future. That is the much sure. bigger Sure, what about bubble. derivatives? Well, I mean, derivatives on what? It depends on what you're talking about. But yes, there's all sorts of credit that has been extended. There's all sorts of counterparty risk inherent in those derivatives. 
Uh, but, I, you know, the real blow up is look at all these bonds that are yielding zero or negative rates all around the world. Everybody believes there's no inflation and everybody thinks inflation is a good thing. Meanwhile, we've got inflation. It's a bad thing. It's going to get a lot worse. And when the central banks around the world have to slam on the brakes and when the Fed can't slam on the brakes because we have too much debt, that's when you're going to see all the air come out of this. Back bubble. in 70 and seconds, uh, Peter, I want to come back and talk about that. Europac.com. I'm Alex Jones, then Fullwars.com. Fourth hour starts now. Five more minutes with our guests, and then David Knight comes into the bullpen. We are waging war on corruption. I'll tell you, the giant facade that is the Wall Street globalist combine is really starting to sag in the high winds. And a tornado is coming down the street. The question is, when will it hit? Peter Schiff of Europac.com. Just in the five minutes or four minutes we have left, I mean, I understand you don't have a crystal ball. We predict this stuff pretty darn accurate. Now you're saying... Yeah, the dollar would start going down. You know, we've got inflation. But we have inflation, but we also have deflation in some commodities. What do you think the effect will be of so many countries announcing zero interest rates or negative interest rates? Well, again, remember, the reason that so many commodity prices were under pressure was because the dollar was rising because everybody believed the Fed was going to raise rates and shrink its balance sheet. And that put downward pressure on commodities. Well, as people are figuring out that that's not going to happen, that that was wrong, that the Fed is going to be printing more money, that the Fed's not going to be raising rates, they're going to cut rates back to zero and maybe negative, commodity prices are turning around. That's why oil prices hit a new high for the year today. We got to about 46.70. Uh, so oil's been going up. And of course, like I said, gold and silver are going up. Other commodities are turning higher. And as the dollar really breaks and people understand uh, what's actually going to happen, commodity prices are going to take off. And all of a sudden, uh, inflation is going to start picking up all around the world, and then central banks won't be able to use low inflation as an excuse to keep interest rates artificially low. Interest rates are going to start to go up, and the country I think that's going to be most affected by it is the United States because we've got the most debt, and we can and we can least afford uh, higher interest rates on all the debt that we have. One area that that I know you haven't been you know that negative on is is china but i mean just for me looking at it it seems like that is unraveling very quickly as well i mean what's your view on other parts of the world well i think other parts of the world are in much better shape than the united states not that there aren't problems in countries like china or like japan or in the eurozone but i think our problems are greater but i think part of the solution to problems in china is a dollar collapse i think the u.s dollar being overvalued is what is responsible for a lot of the malinvestments that are going on in china and I think when the U.S. dollar goes down and the Chinese government stops stockpiling U.S. treasuries and allows their currency to rise and allows their own people to be richer and have greater purchasing power, then I think that's going to solve a lot of the problems over there. I mean, it obviously yeah, that's really profound what you just said, because Trump's saying they have a currency tariff on us because there's lower, but it's really that ours is higher. And so that's the big reason you don't have the investment uh, is because it's too expensive to actually do stuff here. Well, tr Trump is wrong to blame our you know, lack of competitiveness or our trade deficits on the fact that the Chinese currency is, is too low. Uh, you know, it, it's because we have too many regulations, we have too many taxes, we have, we have, we have too much government spending. And, and right now, China, you know, Trump is vilifying China. China is basically subsidizing the United States consumer. And that's why Trump manufactures his ties in China, because if he manufactured them in America, it would be too expensive, nobody could buy it. And so all that happens is if you put a bunch of tariffs on China or if the Chinese currency goes up, prices go up for Americans and then we just stop buying. Sure. What it's about like what about them holding off the admission? Ourselves. What about them holding off the admission that we're collapsing till Trump gets in and then they try to blame Trump? Well, I don't look, I don't know that they're going to be able to blame Trump uh, for this. I think it's funny if Hillary Clinton wins and she inherits a recession, it's going to be funny watching her blaming it on Bush. She's going to try to say that, well, this is the Bush recession and forget about the eight, eight years of Obama. But I don't think anything really can be blamed on, on Trump. But, but once Trump gets in there, obviously, if he adopts some of the policies he's talking about uh, and everything blows up while he's president, then, then, then he might take the blame for that. But it's going to be hard to sure, blame him. Sure, sure. I want to have you on next time to, to talk some about how you would advise Trump. You advise presidential candidates before and uh, what you think is wrong with some of his plans. Thank you, Peter Schiff. Europac.com, Peter Schiff, Euro Pacific Capital, billions under management, predicted uh, the 2008 crises and so much more. He's been predicting that QE Unlimited wouldn't work. And he's been predicting much of what's now happened.
And I've got a bunch of economic news. After he starts breaking it down, I'm going to go over here today. Uh, but uh, here are some of the headlines. Simply the worst. Obama is the first president ever to not see a single year of 3% GDP growth. Very, very interesting to see that happening. Uh, we've got other reports here. White House struggles to explain weak economy as Obama boasts of job growth. U.S. economy expands to 0.5, pace weakest in two years. Let me just first ask Peter Schiff this. Peter, we know that a lot of experts use old government accounting numbers that still weren't perfect, but like John Williams and others, and they crunch things. I know you do this yourself. Obviously, these are cooked numbers. So looking at this, What's the real state of the economy after seven and a half years of Obama? And then obviously they're admitting now the world economy is in deep crisis. Where are we going after that? Well, the economy is a complete disaster. It's actually a lot worse than what people think because the only way they're able to manufacture the growth rates that we have is by pretending there's no inflation election or after because if they go before the election, then they have to acknowledge how weak the economy is and that undermines the message that Hillary is going to be run, running on. And it hurts the credibility of Obama, who's going around the world taking credit for saving everybody. Here's my concern. Correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't they just accelerated the same policies that Bush had, who just continued the Clinton policies that set up this current scam we're under? A, and then B, uh, Peter, my concern is they say massive tax increases on middle class for the next banker bailout. They've only expanded derivatives. So my concern yeah, I mean, is about have, what they're going to do to respond to this. Yeah, uh, all Obama did was double down or triple down on the same failed policies that brought us the 08 crisis, which is why this one is better. It's going to be bigger. But nobody is prepared for it. Look, gold is at a new high for the year today. It almost hit 1300 Silver made a new high for the year. Gold stocks are at a new high. You know, the average gold stock has doubled in price in the last three months. Some have tripled, some have quite Sure, what about the lawsuit that Zero Hedge is reporting on now where they're basically admitting that gold has been manipulated? Well, who cares if it's been manipulated? It's going to go up. They can't stop it. No, but it. that's my but point, it, is it proves it's going to go up if they've been naked shorting it all along. Oh, yeah, well, look, but, they, but a lot of the shorting has been because they don't understand what's going to happen. The typical hedge fund is blowing up right now. All the big money on Wall Street has been betting wrong for years. Those bad bets are blowing up. Right now, it's like a deer in a headline moment for them. The dollar index just hit a new low for the year. We are heading for a dollar crisis. Gold prices are going to explode. I've been telling your audience this for months and months. I've been coming on the show. People need to do something. No, People no, I've to told you I'm not sure, but it just seems like common sense that there's massive inflation in currencies everywhere, and then gold's always been pegged as a backup currency. It's going to go up. They are artificially drove it down, but like a beach ball, you can't hold it at the bottom of the pool yeah. forever. The, the Chinese yuan just had its biggest up day yesterday since 2005 against the dollar. And the hedge funds are short the yuan. They are all positioned uh, for the exact wrong outcome. There's still a window of opportunity. I mean, it's getting sh you know smaller and smaller. Sure. Because the where do you think gold will be day. by? Where do you think gold will be on December 15th? <clears throat> this, excuse me. You know, by the, it, it tends to every year have its peak in in the in, in the fall and winter. I mean, how high do you think it'll get this year? Look, I think gold's going a lot higher. I mean, once we get through 13, for example, the first quarter where they just told us uh, that we got half a percent, 0.5 GDP growth. And by the way, the Atlanta Fed just forecasted, or not the Atlanta, the New York Fed is now forecasting 0.8% for the second quarter. So not even a bounce back. But the government told us that inflation in the first quarter was just 0.7% on an annualized basis. Now, it... For the fourth quarter of last year, they told us that inflation was 0.9. So theoretically, they're saying inflation went down. Oil prices were up 3.5% uh, in the first quarter. Rents were way up. In fact, year over year, rents are up 8%. All the prices are going up, and the government is claiming that inflation is practically non-existent. Yet, even with non-existent inflation, the best they can do is a half a percent GDP growth. We are in a recession. Whether the government wants to acknowledge it or not, this is a recession. Nothing that Obama did work. He inherited a mess, I agree, but he is going to leave his successor with an even bigger mess. The economy is in worse shape. The Fed made it worse. And I think, yeah, they're going to be doing QE4. They're going to be cutting rates. They might be going negative. The only question is, will they do it before the 1800? We're knocking on the door. I think we can move up to 1500, you know, again, relatively soon. And if the Fed acknowledges the weakness in the economy that they're still denying, when the Fed came out with their sure. statement a couple of days ago, they didn't raise rates. 
but they're still pretending that the economy is strong enough that a rate hike is coming. Sure, well, you and, Dent, you and Dent had your, your, your friendly debate here, but it got a little bit heated. And I think he's a smart guy, made a lot of you know, predictions like you have, and I get his demographic cliff, but I, I agree with you. The fact that there's limited amounts of gold and that everybody values it around the world, the Chinese and institutions are getting it, that's why it is going to go up. Scarcity means more value, yeah, Dent, and I don't see this Dent, as a dead cat bounce now how long it's been going up. Yeah, Dent is dead wrong on this. I mean, he's, he's basically siding with Goldman Sachs and you, the mainstream on Wall Street. He believes in the dollar. He believes in the Fed. He thinks gold's going down. Put all your money in U.S. dollars. Buy U.S. treasuries. He couldn't be more wrong. Hopefully he will, uh, you know, acknowledge his mistake. I remember when he was on the phone on the show with me, I forget what price point he said that he would turn around and get bullish on gold if it got above 1400 or 1450 I forget where that was. Yeah, he said that. But yeah. we're going to be there soon. So maybe he'll turn around and get on the right side of this trade because I'm afraid too many people are going to 